Well, Ryan, welcome back to Peterborough United. We spoke during lockdown and um, you must have put up a great poker face at that point. Um, <laughs> how pleased are you to be back? Um, delighted, absolutely delighted. The uh, Every sort of aspect, firstly professionally, um, in regards to um, being back at the club, working with some people who I've worked with previously, um, who I know and trust and vice versa. Uh, also, new staff that, that I haven't worked with mm -hmm. before, but I've obviously, so for example with Kieran, I've known Kieran years, I still spoke to Kieran uh, mm -hmm. regularly. Um, so I have an idea of the staff that are, that are here that I haven't worked with through him. Um, and yeah, the, the opportunity to come back here, while it's the same club, there's a lot of different things in place, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, positive things in place in regards to the academy that makes it absolutely fantastic. Obviously from a personal point of view, uh, moving back to the area of my family and with my friends around and um, coming back to a club that obviously I have a, a massive, massive affinity with is, yeah, it's, it's, it's been excellent and so far it's been great. Mm. And to paraphrase Kieran, when we spoke to him, he said that, you know, you were an outstanding coach when you were here previously, but to go away and get the experience of working at the FA, working at Manchester City could only yeah. have improved you. Do you yeah. feel that looking back over these last three years, you've grown as a person as well? Yeah, yeah. 100% so um, that was that was my, my reason for leaving obviously I'd spent a long time here as a player I'd spent a long time here as a coach and, and loved so much of it but I always felt that I wanted to to experience other things because you just said there to, to make myself better and that's ultimately my job as a coach is to try and help players and make players better but if I'm not going to uh, have that same attitude with myself, then mm. then I'm not going to be able to do it to the best of my ability. I feel and or maximise my own potential. So that was it. And, and yeah, I've learnt learnt countless things, things that um, that are new that that I feel like I, I now bring and and what have you. But also confirming things that I thought and and, and had inside me mm. as a coach and, and and worked on anyway. So both sides of it, it's it's. A win-win for me. So yeah, it's been a fantastic three years. I've learned a lot. I spent a lot of time at the uh, at both the FA and Man City working with some top players, some that for their age, the best players mm -hmm. in the country, some of them. And yeah, that can only help me uh, be better, uh, have higher standards for myself there first and foremost. But obviously, then to transcend that that mm -hmm. higher standard and and the expectation that that I and, and we as coaches. Put on the young players as well. Yeah, it also takes you out of your comfort zone because, as you say, if you were here at Peterborough, you can do it to your best of ability at this club. But when you're going and moving away from home, you've yeah. got the added issues of that yeah. family life being yeah. different. No, it's a whole I'm different juggling act. Completely, completely, Phil. And and for me, that was another big, big reason to do it. And um, <laughs> maybe a selfish reason in regards to family, but I, I wanted that experience to to, to move away mm. and and sample something and and it was great again in many many ways met loads of friends and and, and people will stay in contact with 100 percent but at the same time uh it got to the to the point after two years and and uh the opportunity for the obviously to come back here so professionally great a big tick but personally as well mm. as, as i said uh, the opportunity to come home was yeah it was a it was a no-brainer absolutely perfect timing you worked with uh, Jack Collison, who was obviously a former Peterborough player when you yeah. were here previously. You're now in a department where you've got Matthew Etherington, Simon yeah. Davies, players that obviously played for the football club. Yeah. How important, given the experience you've had elsewhere, is it to have yeah. people that know the club? Yeah, I think it is really important. I think it's really important, two things. One, to have a mixture of both, because you don't necessarily need just either ex-players or people who have an affinity with the club because you do need uh, fresh ideas, you need uh, fresh blood sometimes, um, 100%. So it's important you have a mix, so whether it's a playing background or a teaching background or a mixture of both that some people have, so it's important you have a mix. Um, but I do, yeah, I do feel that it's really important to have have uh, ex-players, but, but just as importantly, the best people as well. Um, Matty and Sai, who... I've known from a distance. They're obviously a few yeah. years older than me. They were the players. Come, they were the shining light in the academy as me as a player. Both of them. Um, so because of that, I've always followed their careers as players, um, and looked look, uh, looked to them from that point of view and, and took a keen interest in them. And then obviously them coming back a couple of years ago uh, took more of an interest in what they were doing as obviously as coaches. 
Um, and it's fantastic. It's fantastic for the players um, that they're working with now. It's also fantastic for the players that are, that are progressing through to see that. And it's great for the coaches. It's great for me as a coach to, to obviously see what they're doing and, and try and learn and take things from them um, and the other coaches as well. So uh, Kieran said it. Uh, it's, it's bang on that, that we have certainly at the, at the top end I would feel with myself, with, with Matty and Sai, ex-players that have, have, have been through the academy at this club can only, can only be a positive thing. And your role is, is such a key one. Everyone thinks that within the academy, the 18s managers are the most important people. But actually, when you look at it as a whole, mm -hmm. because you're going through so many different phases, yeah. when they get to the phase that you're obviously going to be in charge of, it can go so many different ways. Yeah, I think that no one phase is... is probably more important than the other because you need the foundation to get the basis in, the foundation, the, fu the fundamentals of, of playing the game. Um, you need the PDP because that's that get, that's that uh, link between schoolboy mm. and first team, which is so important to get right. But the youth development phase, I think the key, the difference uh, between them is one, the number of teams. So obviously we've extended it even more now, so mm. we've got 12 to 16s. Um, rather than just 13s to 16s. So, so basically when they go into uh, year seven at the school. Um, but also the amount of things that, that go on in those, those, those periods. So uh, just take from a football point of view. So you go in from 9v9 to 11v11. You're um, beginning then physically to change. You've got a, 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 at 12 years old, they are still quite similar physicality. Yeah. Certainly 14s, 15s, they start to go and you'll get dots and you'll get people that are physically like men. Um, and then you've got the emotional side of it, that obviously they're, they're going through a um, few puberty in those, those ages. Um, and you get outside influences. Uh, once you start and get into 16 players, certainly, and, and at this club it's happened so many times where they're starting to, to get the notice of uh, the 18s and, and as we've known in the past and players that, that I've worked with, even at, at first team, mm. at, at under 16 players are, are thrown in. So you start getting the, the expectations from outside and you can get uh, whether it's uh, agents or whether it's um, other people taking an interest that can can maybe detract focus. So the, the size of the, the, the phase and the differences from bottom to top are massive. That's why it's so important. Mm. Um, and while for me, I, I will oversee that um, and I'll obviously focus uh, game days and, and a lot of my stuff with the under 16s, um, I'm overseeing the whole phase and it, I'm just one person. You've got, in every age group, you've got uh, a lead, an assistant who play, who, who work with the boys mm. far more often day to day than myself for, for a lot of those yeah. age groups. So 100% we have and I'll continue to, to lean on those guys. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's a massive phase in terms of things can go from zero that they might be a, a struggler and just doing okay to by the end of 16 can be flying mm. or it can go obviously yeah. the opposite it can go the exact opposite so so yeah so it's 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 an important phase it's one that I'm really passionate about um, I've done obviously the job before uh, on a as I said earlier we've got a lot more support now which means I think we can and we need in terms of expectation to be doing the job better um, and we will do that, there's, there's no question. So, yeah, it's exciting. And just finally, it, it, it's interesting, people on the outside will look and say, oh, yeah, it's great, you've got um, the first team players coming through the academy. But actually, the story here is not that they've, they've come through the academy, they've come mm. right through the academy, mm. and not just one of them either. Mm. You've got Flynn, you've got yeah. Harrison, you've got Ricky. Yeah. And for you, as someone who's worked, who's working in that department yeah. now, it must be great to just say, look. Yeah, fantastic. Have another look, because... Yeah. They're the ones that can tell the story. Yeah, for sure. And then obviously Sam Cartwright, mm. the year above them, um, uh, Carl Barco as well. So, so yeah. So those boys, I actually remember that group. Um, so Ricky's a year below, isn't he? But I remember Brad and, and Archie, their first time as under nines, going to Norwich. We played Norwich in a festival. And we didn't have a keeper, so it was their first thing. It was like the summer pre-season, and we didn't have a keeper, so they all just rotated every five or six minutes. So I can remember, I, I can remember it so well. And uh, and I worked with the under 11s when they were under 10s uh, for two, three years. So so I saw those a lot of those players, and then 
fast forward a little bit, then uh, they came into the schools program at under 14, year nine. Uh, so I was still doing that, and and I've always always had an eye on on those players, and and it's great to see. It's great for them mm. and, and their families first and foremost because I know the dedication that that, that they've put in. Um, but it's also, like you say, it's great for, for everyone else to look and go, right, there, there is a pathway, there's a, a tangible, I can see these guys doing it, they've been on the same journey as me. And that is really, really important to, I think, create belief. And, and ultimately, if you, you don't have belief that you're gonna go and make it, then you're not gonna. Mm. So for, from that point of view, it's great, as well as for the individuals themselves. And um, we hope to create even more, even more stories like that.